Good morning, Tenney students. It's me, Marissa Safi. Hope you enjoyed Tuesday's video. Today is day two of March Madness of semifinals. Today's books competing against each other are The Panda Problem, read again by Nathan Pichardo, versus The Invisible Boy, read by Emily Ford. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Also, make sure to watch Tuesday's video and vote. We will, re we will release the finalists next week. Yo, what's goody? My name is Sid the Sloth, and as you may remember, my friend the panda has a major problem. Once again, my best bud Nathan is going to tell you all about it. Hi, my name is Nathan Bittardo, and today I'll be reading The Panda Problem by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by Hannah Marks. Once upon a time, there was a panda who lived in a beautiful bamboo grove, but the panda had a big problem. Nope. Excuse me? I don't have any problems. Lovely view, lots of bamboo to eat, sunny day, what could be better? Psst, this is a story. I'm the narrator and you are the main character. The main character? That sounds important. It is, but you need a problem. Why? So you can solve the problem. That's how stories work. So what's your problem? Do you want to go somewhere? Nope. Are you afraid of spiders? Nope. Do you need a friend? Nope. Do you wish you could fly? Nope. Do you wish you were green? Nope. Is your paw sore? Oh, let me check. Nope. How am I supposed to tell a story if you don't have a problem? I don't know. Looks like you're the one with the problem, buddy. Hey, maybe you are the main character and I am your problem. What? Ridiculous. You're right. How could a sweet little panda like me be a problem? Unless... I started playing a banjo. Really badly? Hey, where did you get that? And what if I hung up upside down and sang the bamboo burp song? Bamboo brap, bamboo brap. You are definitely starting to feel like a problem. Great. And what if it starts reading jelly beans? Now there's a problem for you. How will you explain that? Next time, I'm going to narrate a book about Brock's. Nice, quiet rocks. And what if a bunch of aliens landed? How could you possibly tell a story about a burping panda and jelly bean rain and aliens? Aliens? There's no such thing as... Hi, aliens. And what if we built a boat and sailed to Antarctica? But the setting of this for this story is a bamboo grove. There are no penguins in bamboo groves. Okay. We've got a main character, you, and a problem, me. So what happens next? Well, sometimes a problem gets worse. But that won't happen now, because things can't get any worse. Oh, can't they? What if suddenly there were two pandas? Wow, I'm tired and hungry, very hungry. I think we have a problem. Finally, what is it? Well, we're very hungry and there's no bamboo in Antarctica. Well, well, that is a problem. How will you solve it? I don't know, I'm too hungry to think straight. Glibbity glork. Hey, great idea, alien. Okay, narrator, if you get us home, we will stop making problems and help you tell your panda story. No banjos, no banjos, no burping, no penguins. Really? Well, all right. Ahem. Together, the pandas and aliens came, with a, came up with a great plan. 
the pain is an alien spell out, help, or jelly beans. The alien ship scooped everyone up in its tractor beam. And dropped them safely back in the bamboo grove, where everyone settled down to a bamboo and jelly bean feast. What a satisfying ending. Yawn. I'm really sleepy. Wake up. We need to help the narrator tell a story. We promised. Oh, that's okay. Let's try again tomorrow. I'm sleepy too. Hey, why don't you tell me a bedtime story? Sure, we are story experts now. Once upon a time, there was a narrator, but the narrator had a big problem. Nope. And that is The Panda Problem by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by Hannah Marks. Hey guys, it's me, James, the Invisible Boy's Widow Butter, and today Emily Ford will be reading a story all about him. Hi, my name is Emily, and today I will be reading The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig and illustrated by Patrice Barton. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Miss Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Miss Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Mika and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. Best players get per picked first, then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction, just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everyone did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while other kids played board games in red, Brian sits at his table, doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. Thank you for toasting my marshmallow. Space aliens locked in intergalactic battle battles. I got you now. Crackers, are Yay. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Hi. Hi, friend. Have a cookie. And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. On Monday morning, Miss Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bull what? Bulgogi. It's a Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I eat bulgogi. And the kids laugh. All of them, that is, except Brian. He sits wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls from the tent tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. 
Back in class, Miss Carlotti asked the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Miss Carlotti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio. Let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Miss Carlotti gives the, cl the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Amelia. What kind of people do you think live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. The crooked story we made up on the spot. It's lunchtime, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout. Hey, Brian, over there. Brian turns and sees Justin waving at him, o waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him to sit at the table. Cookie? Thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. The end.